Sometimes in a data task, all the information you need is in the text that you're given. It's a bit of a comprehension sort of exercise as well. Uh, so this is about an allergic reaction, uh, sort of hay fever, and in the response, histamine is produced, and which can cause uh, a lot of the symptoms that, that you associated with hay fever. So this is about, can you use vitamin C uh, to treat the symptoms of, of hay fever? And really, from the text, you can see how it, it could work. It says vitamin C acts by blocking histamine receptors. So I'd just like to do a little sketch to just illustrate the point uh, whenever I'm doing a comprehension exercise. So if this is vitamin C here, it will bind to um, a receptor that's on the cell surface membrane uh, of a cell. Um, and this cell would then, if histamine bound to this receptor, um, you'd start to see symptoms of, of, of an association between histamine binding to the receptors. But if vitamin C binds to the receptor instead, it blocks it preventing histamine, which has a similar shape to vitamin C, or must do, or part of the molecule must do, it can fit into the same receptor, so it prevents histamine from binding to the receptor, so preventing some of the symptoms. Other information that's of use and you need to use later on comes from, comes from within in here as well. Um, so it says an excessive intake, so really high, what we mean by that is high doses, so high doses of vitamin C can cause diarrhoea, so that's a side effect if you take too much. And another thing that could be picked up as well is the idea of the safe limit is 200 milligrams per day. So really we're talking about a high dose is going to be something that's above 2,000 milligrams per day. Another point that you can pick up on here is the idea that females are given less than males. So why might that be? Um, so it's purely guidance based on average body size. So the larger you are, the more vitamin C you will need so that you'd have a, a roughly equal concentration, so milligrams of vitamin C per centimetres cubed in the blood. So why is there a different recommended daily intake? Males and females have different mean masses, so the intake is based on body size or per unit size, so you can have the same concentration in the blood. One of the questions is, why would you not have doses of 300, three, sorry, 3,000 milligrams of vitamin C and that comes from these two points, it could cause diarrhoea or it might not be safe. This is a really poor example of a study and there's lots of things which means that you can't accept any claims what is from here. One of the things that's really poor about this study is the subjective nature of how the dose, the, the effects are being recorded. So no relief, slight relief, some relief. This is very subjective, it's not quantitative, there's no numerical value, it's based on opinion. So what slight relief is to somebody it might be no relief to might be no relief to somebody else, um, and how is clear relief different to no relief? It's completely subjective and not really much use at all. So if five hundred milligram tablets are advertised as preventing hay fever. Why we might we not be able to uh, support this claim? So first of all, there's only a very very small sample size. We've got six volunteers tiny sample size. So the results are not representative of the whole population. Um, we also don't know the size of each volunteer. If you, from the previous resource, we is leading, leading us down the line of the idea that males and females are different masses, so they need different dosages. Well, these volunteers, there's no, we don't know their size at all. We don't know their body mass. So that would have an impact on the results as well. There's no control group anywhere. So something you should be looking for in a, in a study, really, is to see if there's a control group. Uh, it allows you to see if the effect is due to, in this case, vitamin C. So there's no control group with any of the uh, volunteers. No volunteers given a placebo containing something other than vitamin C, given in exactly the same way, and that they'd be treated exactly the same way. So there's no control group at all. Something that you should always look for to, if you're going to be able to back up a claim, has a statistical test been used? In this case, no, it hasn't. No statistical test has been used. So we cannot see if the results are significant. We can't see to the degree of probability of the results being due to chance. And again, linking in with the subjective nature, people have, diff have different perceptions to each other. So a little hay fever is still suffering and feeling better. How can you compare those three things? So all in all, not a good study. But please carry on. Whenever you see a data task, annotate around the outside before you see the questions. Therefore, it's very quick to then answer the questions and you're less likely to miss key points.